Hey, what's up, Derek Kirk of Effectatron here, and today we're gonna create this cool, simple MoGraph project inside of C4D 2026. And so I wanna make a video that plays to the strengths of C4D and why it's so good and the things about it that I do love, right? Because it's still a fantastic software, okay? So let's go ahead and create this cool, very pretty organic scene that um, if you hit play on this, you'll see all of these are just have this natural motion to them and we can put this whole thing together in just a few minutes which is just what's so cool about it and it looks great so let's go ahead and do this from scratch and then this file this project file will be available to download on patreon as well as all my other project files and stuff seriously do one month of it for five bucks download everything of mine you'll get like a hundred bucks worth of stuff um that's totally fine because the $5 that you've paid for that one month will get me more income than if you watched my videos a thousand times on YouTube. So I appreciate the support. YouTube money is poo-poo. Um, okay, anyway, let's go ahead and make this. Okay, so let's start off with creating a spline. We'll do a rectangular spline. Let's hit it to X, Z, and do 20 by 20. Turn on some rounding. Lower that down so it's not completely round, maybe about three. And then what we can do is add an extrusion. Hold Alt to extrude right here. It's obviously way too much, so maybe just like one. That's good. And then we can come in here to the caps, and we can do some rounding here. But I actually want the tension to be all the way down. So we get this nice kind of like inlet kind of shape. And I think that that looks really nice, right? I think that looks good and sharp and clean. But yeah, there we go. So now we've got this cool shape just like that. We can go ahead and make a cloner of that. Hold Alt to click the cloner button. <laughs> Make sure we keep it set to instance, and since we know it's 20, we can do 20.1, so it's just slightly bigger, so there's a tiny little gap in between them, and do like 20 by 20, boom. There we go, we've got a nice big grid of these. Now, go ahead and open up the asset browser, and instead of here, we're gonna go to models, and we're gonna type in KB. And we have this really cool, like the new ones and the old ones, right? So we wanna click the new one, and go to reveal as in asset browser there we go so now we have all of these and we're going to just hold shift and click and also hold control and click this one and maybe that one i don't, I don't uh, maybe maybe this one and undo that one that one's too similar so is this one and that one i don't want them all to look the same right i want some variation which is nice this one's kind of cool but it's a little too funky so right click these hit load boom there we go now what we can do is hold this cloner Change it from iterate to random, which is important. And it hold control, copy, paste. Control C, control V, delete that. Grab all of these, toss it in the cloner, boom. There we go. Now we have this really cool grid. Now they're all slightly too big. We could have prepped for that earlier and just done the right size, or we could just fix it now, which is totally fine. Go to transform, lower this down to 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 0.75. There we go. So now we have all these different bits and bobs and we can pull that up a little bit so we have all these bits and bobs just scattered across our scene which is really nice and easy to do uh it looks good i don't love this shape here so we might find that one actually it's fine it's totally fine okay cool so what you can do now is if you want you can just like change the c to this bing 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 and just get like a layout of some things you want kind of Get an idea of the shot you want. So there's not too many repeating, but not too many different. Should be pretty good. Uh, that's good. I like that. One, two, three, four, seven, two. <laughs> nice. Okay. So now what we can do is just add a dome light really quick. Dome light down here, this little folder. Boop, click that. Type in studio. And grab one of these light studios, probably this blurry one. Hit OK. That's decent. Let's lower that intensity down to so like 0.25. We don't really need that to be that intense. Um, and then if render settings, if you want to know render settings I use, I have a video on the fastest like look dev render settings and how to set render settings up for your GPU specifically because it is different for each GPU. Okay, now let's add an area light. I'm gonna do target tag and null and grab that light and we're just gonna pull it off over here to the corner Pull it up ever so slightly, shrink it down, and stretch it out wide. And then we're going to take this and really lower in the spread of that. Because we want it to be really sharp, like maybe like like that. 
really tight, really tight. Okay. And so now what we can do is just to check this, whoop, pull that back a bit, slide this back open. Okay. So right now what we should have, if we look at this is some nice long shadows. There we go. And we do, we've got these nice long shadows trailing off. And if we wanted to, um, we could come in here, we can make it extra sharp. We can try to pull it up a bit and shorten up the shadows a little bit. And then if we really wanted to, we could add a gobo in this. So if we go to the asset browser here, go to media and type in gobo, you have all these gobos you can use. Uh, we'll try to add one and see if it helps, but we'll just go ahead and grab that and toss it in the texture. And we'll see if that really elevated the scene or not. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Got some pockets. I don't know that the gobo makes sense in the scene. Yeah, it does. I think it does. Okay, we'll leave that in there. Cool. Nice. Game time decision there. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to introduce color into this scene and also movement. So playing into the strengths of C4D, let's do some MoGraph stuff really quick and easy because it is so easy to do. We go ahead and select our cloner one, which is our, all of our bits and bobs here. We're gonna go to MoGraph Effector and then Plane Effector. Instead of here, we're gonna change the parameters. We're not gonna do the position. We're just gonna do the rotation of the H. So we can see, we can make them all rotate. So we'll do like 90 degrees. We don't wanna go crazy. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to go in here to the fields. And instead of here, I'll go to random field. Boop. And now what I can do is go to animate speed and crank that up. And check this out. So now when we hit play, we will have just these shapes just randomly kind of twisting and turning. But they're not looping. We want it to loop. So go to the loop period. Set it to 90 frames. And now we're getting this seamless loop. We've got our timeline set to 89 frames, so we don't have frame zero and frame 90 the same. That way we don't have a repeating frame. But there we go, now we have this instantly looping material. And you can really see it better here, you know. But that's just nice. And you could layer on things, you can change things, you can tweak the noise, you can tweak, put a delay on it, but then you're gonna mess with your loop a little bit. But overall, pretty simple effect very quickly and easily. And so now when we add some color on this, it should look really nice. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit save. Okay. And we'll go ahead and create a new material. Open material. Boom, boom. Open PBR. And we're going to hit C. Type in user. This is going to give us color user data. And we're going to be able to use this with all of our MoGraph information to drive the color. So if we click that into the color here and then toss that on our cloner one, we should see nothing because we haven't chosen anything yet. Now we're going to go to preset objects, geometry, ID, color. Boop. Now we get this rainbow of pretty colors. Um, some my pretty colors, some colors are yucky, <laughs> but we can adjust that. But there we go. Um, so now we've got that. All right. So what I'm going to do now is adjust the colors. And this is the thing that I struggle with the most. So what I ended up doing is I come in here and I go to coolers, dot co howdy and i explore turning palettes because when i try to do color palettes it just never works out so let's do the warm autumn glow here and so all we do let me show you how to set this up is we can create a ramp hit c ramp and we're going to drag and drop that in here in between these two which will automatically connect it and just the, the advances that the node editors had over the last few years is insane. Okay, but here's this. Now in here we have a ramp. And we're gonna go ahead and delete that node and just have this one. And we're gonna change it to step instead of smooth because we want each color to be its own thing instead of being like blending between the two. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this color. And what I do is I go to coolers.io, sorry, .co. And inside of our warm autumn, we just click right here it says copied it, we go in here, we do the hex code and we paste it. And then we double click again and rinse repeat with all those colors. So let's do that real quick off camera. All right, there we go. And so you can see that that already just looks so, so much better, but we are getting a lot more orange than I like. So what we can do is just kind of um, basically select all of these and then just copy them and shift them around and just kind of make copies of them. So they offset each other. Let it be really 
more random. If you think there's too much of one color, take one color out, slide them around, just kind of play with them. Happy little accents, right? Too much blue. There we go. I want more tan. There we go. Too much tan. There we go. Cool. Nice. All right. That looks good. Now let's look. Well, work on the detail of these really quick, because obviously you know right now they look okay. Let's turn up our light just a little bit. So we, it looks okay, but it looks fake. It looks 3D right now. So all we have to do is use some of the more powerful tools in C4D, which is the asset browser here. Go in here to media and type in imperfection. You don't even have to finish it, just imperf. And we can grab some fingerprints. Go ahead and grab those, pull those in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and put that on the metalness of this. So it's gonna give some of it a little more metal and some of it a little less metal, which I think will make it look kind of nice. And then what else we can do is we can grab another fingerprint one that's maybe not so intense like this one here, the smudge. Yep. And we're going to take that one and plug that into the roughness. So we'll see that affect that. And now lastly, we're going to do like a scratch one with tiny scratches. We can scale these up so you guys can see them better. Download that and drag and drop that in. Hit C, type in bump, grab a bump map, plug that into that, set our bump to negative 0.1, okay? And then plug that into our open PPR, just drag and drop that on there, geometry bump. And there we go. So now we have a much more realistic material. Too much bump, I think, on that. And yeah, the bump's a little too intense. So what we can do is adjust that. All right, I'm actually gonna plug the smudges into the metalness. I think that gives it kind of a cooler look and fingerprints into the roughness. I don't remember if I did that earlier or not, but with this, we need to fix this. So we're gonna hit C, type in ramp, and you can use the scalar ramp or whatever if you want. Uh, but we're gonna use this one, boop, color ramp, and we're just gonna make it more dark. Slide this down and make that less intense. So we just have some of those scratches, and then we're also going to scale this up by like four. So it's gonna tile those scratches more, so they'll be smaller, but they'll be a little less intense. Maybe we did a little too much of the ramp. Right, I'm gonna go that crazy with it. There we go, and what we can do is we can do the bucket render to make sure our denoiser is not just like removing our scratches, because I want like a tiny bit of scratches. Yeah, and you could play around with these, um, but that looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, just gives it a little bit of realism. But you can see when we did when we do um, our render view here. Watch this. See, notice the colors here. They're gonna change, which is so annoying. It's like a bug. Like the IPR with the color user data is different. There is some way to fix it. I can't remember. So if you know, please tell me in the comments because it is incredibly frustrating to set your colors up and then have them be different. Okay, so that's looking good. Nice. So now what we can do is just copy paste that and toss that on our other cloner here. Zoom out a bit. There we go. And so now we have like this really pretty vibrant color. And because we changed the seeds of the second one, there it's not going to match up even when we do the bucket render, which will change like the way the colors are, but they shouldn't line up. Otherwise, they will probably line up where orange will be on orange, blue will be on blue a lot more than they are now, um, which isn't disappointing. But this looks really nice and clean. I'm quite happy with it. Cool. All right, back to IPR, just for the sake of this. What we can do now is just come in here to our camera and do redshift camera, so it's about 85. And what we can do is really start framing this up. I, mean, I, want, I want to be able to like see the detail of these, but I also don't really care about getting everything in there but because that looks pretty cool like that it does so you could do like multiple angles where you kind of have it like this you have the big wide one which looks really nice and then you could do one that's like you know your tight one of your favorite model which mine is this one 
And then when you have your camera set up, go to display and turn on grid, and that's gonna help you line up your shots and stuff better. So maybe something like this. And then go to the bokeh, turn that on, focus distance on this guy and make it like 1.4, like real small, maybe too small. Something like that, and then again, check the colors with the actual bucket render. It's frustrating, but there you go. All right, so the materials themselves look fantastic, but the color grouping looks pretty bad, which I'm not excited about. So let's take our dome light and crank it up to like 0.5. I think it needs a little bit, just a, well, yeah, just a little bit of a bump there. And what I want to do is I'm going to come in here and go to the ramp that's setting the color of everything. And noticing that most things are orange and pink, or sorry, orange and cream. So somewhere in here, we need to add more red and blue and stuff. So we're just going to slide these in. All right, so you just have a lot more options in there. Totally fine. All right, so that's neat. Um, let's go ahead and do the IPR real quick. Nah, 0.5. I like the, the difference. Yeah. Cool. So let's see what that's actually going to look like when we hit render. Well, I don't like. Then we just, you know, we come in here to our camera. I've got a purple color that I don't like. We've moved our light. We've rotated our camera slightly. I don't remember what the last time I recorded thing was, but I just got my camera set up here uh, with the coordinates of negative 90. So it's straight down and 45 degrees. So everything's going to be a perfect diamond. And then it's right in the middle. It's just lifted up above everything. We've got the bokeh off and stuff now. Um, but I've got this purple color out of nowhere. I don't know where there's, there's no purple. So we're going to delete a big chunk of this and then select all these and slide it back out like that. Okay. And then we're going to grab just a few of these and just kind of space them out. So we don't want one color to really dominate too much space like that. I don't know where that purple was coming from. So it's freaking me out. All right, let's go ahead and render the preview of this so we can see, but now, you know, you'll be able to tell when we hit play, all these are cranking away and turning. You probably can't tell from the video feedback, but there's, they are. But yeah, here we go. Everything's looking good. I like it. Excellent, which means now we can render this out and say, okay. And then one thing I mentioned in the render settings is just make sure you have random noise pattern off if you're using optics or anything like that, because it will, for an animation, because it will help. So yeah, if you enjoyed that, let me know. Um, I like doing quick little projects, um, the, the strength of C4D and what I like about it, but I don't know how many people want um, those kind of beginner tutorials still, so let me know because I don't know how many beginners there are now in C4D still, but uh, let me know what you guys want.